Okay, let's hope this is working. Um, to anybody who is on the live stream, I'm Austin Kim. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Cryptarium. And I thought we'd do a live stream today to, um, to go through the, the latest updates, what we've been up to, where we're going next, um, that type of thing. So first of all, apologies for the background. I'm not working from the office today. Um, it's actually um, Russia Day today. Um, so many of our office out in Moscow are on holiday. Um, they have uh, a days of celebration. Um, so I decided I'd take the opportunity to work from home. Anyway, less of that. So let me give you a, a quick update. So the I think the big news is that we've launched our card this week. I think many of you are aware that um, we've been working for a very, very long time now to try and put a, a card out into the market. We had a few false dawns. We put a huge amount of effort last year into getting something launched with, uh, Mast um, sorry, with Visa, uh, but for various reasons that just didn't come off. Um, and then we changed our tactics completely and we decided we wanted to do a card that could be global. So that's what we've done. We went out and the only solution that can be global at any one time um, was union pay. And of course, nobody had ever done a union pay um, crypto based card before. So uh, it took us maybe a little bit longer than we hoped. But this week we have started to issue our cards. Um, as I spoke to our marketing manager, Sirenu Shongni, um, an hour ago, we've now issued over 1000 cards. Um, and the difference between our cards and everybody else's, I, I'm just going to keep repeating this point is our cards are global. Um, so I have a Coinbase card. Um, Coinbase have a, a UK based um, payment card. Uh, it's quite cool. Actually, it's not a bad card at all, but you have to be a UK citizen to use that card. Um, our card is not a UK card. Our card is a global card. Um, so we've issued over a thousand cards and from, um, from the information that we have so far to over 75 different countries. Um, which isn't bad. Nobody else on the planet right now that we're aware of can issue cards to 75 different countries. Um, so we've issued the first thousand cards. Um, we did a, a run of 5,000 cards. It might not sound a lot, uh, but when, you, um, when you're in the cards business, you have to pre-order cards. They don't just sit there waiting to be issued. You have to pre-order them. They have to be printed. And of course, every time somebody um, orders a card, it then has personal printing with a, a name and address, etc. Not an address, but you know, name and personal identification, etc. So we ordered 5,000 cards to get things going. What we'll do with those 5,000 cards is we'll see how people use them. Yesterday, um, I used my card for the first time. Um, I went to a local supermarket which had an ATM outside. I put my card in and I withdrew 20 um, pounds from my card, which was very exciting. Um, and I could have done that whether I was in Turkey or Chile or Brazil, it doesn't really matter. We could have done that um, absolutely um, anywhere. So um, once those 5,000 cards have been totally distributed, um, we then will check how people are using the cards. We have to make sure our flows work, our processes work, etc. And as I said, we are the first company in the world to issue a global payment card. And that with it comes with um, some new issues. You know, we do not know if people in Turkey will use the card in the same way as a person in uh, Brazil, for example. Um, so we have to check all of that. Um, and then as soon as that card run has sort of been issued and we've been able to check, um, we will then do a second run of cards. We will probably book for a, between 15 and 20,000 cards for a second run. The cards that we're issuing right now, I will show it on the screen. Um, it is a um, prepaid um, card. And as you can see, there is no branding on this card other than it says Union Pay. There is a reason for that. Um, the reason is to get a um, specially branded card takes um, anything up to six months. I know it sounds uh, quite crazy that we can put a design and send it to um, Union Pay and then it might take six months for them to approve it. But that's the fact. And we just did not want to wait any longer. So we put our design into Union Pay about three months ago. We hoped that the design would be ready by the time of launch, but it was not. And um, we decided not to wait any longer. We, we, you know, everybody's been waiting long enough. And I think the fact that the card doesn't say Cryptarium on it isn't changing the actual value of the card. It can still be used um, just as well as any other um, card, just because it doesn't have Cryptarium on it. Let's not wait. So the next batch, we hope will have the um, Cryptarium image on it. Um, we're actually going, I think we're going with the yellow. 
Um, we wanted it to stand out um, in the wallet. Um, if you open your wallet, everybody's cards, black, silver, blue, etc. So we're going yellow. Because one of the things, of course, is when you open your wallet, which card are you going to pull out? You know, some people have more than one card. I certainly do. So, you know, trying to make it so stand out. But that will, that will come next. In terms of the ordering process, we've got a, a dedicated website. So it's cards.cryptarium.com, just the cryptarium.com with the words cards dot in front of it. Um, so people can go onto that site um, and order their card. Um, we obviously also have the uh, ability with inside um, our application and various other um, means by which people can find out the information and make the various orders. Um, but that is now running smoothly. The other thing which, you know, I have to be careful how I word this, um, but the other thing which is very interesting, of course, is our cards of union pay cards and union pay, as anybody has done any um, research in this area, will know that this is effectively the Chinese equivalent of Visa and MasterCard all rolled into one. Now, that is a very interesting um, development because they, as I said, they do not have a, a geographical split the same way as everybody else does. They have China and non-China. Whereas, of course, Visa has UK, Europe, Central and Eastern Europe, etc. Um, and the cards are issued from the Philippines. Now, we're issuing these by a DHL, I think it is. Um, so they still take, you know, four or five days um, to get somewhere, somewhere. But all of the information is going back to um, the Philippines, where, where the cards are issued. And the Philippines has a very different, um, let's say, information exchange than other markets. So when the cards are issued, the cards are issued. We are aware of it. You are aware of it. Our card partner is aware of it. And that's pretty much it. Um, of course, um, the world might change in the future. Um, but those cards are very private and personal to you. Um, of course, we have a number, um, you know, quite a bit of information about it. But it is personal to you. Whereas in other parts of the world, you know, that may not be the case. And, you know, I, I will not expand any further on that. Um, Yesterday, I took a video uh, of me using the card. A number of our users have been very kind. They've also taken videos of them using their cards. So we had a test run of 100 people over the last week or so. They've all been using them in shops, etc. And all of those type of videos are going to be uploaded um, on our website. As I said, cards.cryptarium.com and also the usual cryptarium.com. There will be links. Um, and that's all going to be there. Hopefully, you've ordered your card and, and, and it'll be on its way. Um, and because we've been so focused on the card, we put everything else on hold. Um, if you have our app, I think you'll agree with me. Hopefully you'll agree with me. Our app looks lovely. I mean, it is a very nicely designed app. I think it's fundamentally different than practically any other um, wallet out there. But a lot of the functionality says, please bear with us um, whilst we're, we're updating this. And it's not that those app parts are not ready. Um, most of them are ready. We just wanted to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes when we were getting the card out. As I said, if you're the first in the world to do something with um, a company like Union Pay, um, a Chinese company, um, touching crypto um, for the first time, um, it, you know, there are lots of complications that we had to manage. So we made sure that we didn't mess up anything else in the application and everything worked um, smoothly. Now that the cards are out, the next um, issue for us is the ability to buy crypto. Actually, no, that's, that's not true. We, we've switched back on the facility now that the cards are activated. We switched on the facility to pay out to a MasterCard. So you can now, within the app, if you want to cash out your crypto to a MasterCard, then you can do that anywhere in the world. Um, we had um, this up and running, and unfortunately, our banking partner that was supplying um, some of the sort of interim services here um, had a few problems, so we had to find a new partner. So we had to switch that off for a couple of weeks, but that's back on. So you can um, pay out now either to your union pay card or to any MasterCard. It's up to you. Um, it, nothing um, prevents you from just sending it to somebody else's MasterCard or your own MasterCard. It's completely up to you. So that's, um, so that's live. Next, before the end of June, as I say, this is actually ready, but we just need to make sure that we release it at the appropriate time. Next is the ability to buy crypto. Now, there are specialist companies out there. Um, Changely is probably the name that most, many people will know about, um, that you can buy crypto. 
um, from. But if you're not in the crypto world, it's a little bit complicated. It, you know, it's not an easy process. The fees are quite high. They don't necessarily give you the best rates, etc. So with the inside the application, um, we are by the end of June, as I say, this is ready now. It's just a matter of when do we actually release it. By the end of June, um, we will um, have the ability to buy crypto directly from the app using a payment card. The rates are cheaper than Changely. The simplicity is significantly better than we think anybody else out there. It's a very, very simple process. Um, it's fast, it's efficient, and it's inside the existing app. Um, I think that, you know the direction we're trying to head to, and we've always said this, we don't want to just be a payment app. We want to have all the facilities that you can get um, in a traditional bank. So we've got all of those things and we're just rolling them all out um, at, at the same time. Then once we've all got all that out there, then we move into what we were saying in the white paper. We start to burn the tokens. We start to try and charge for transactions using our tokens. We've always said that will be the key driver to any changes in our token price. And as soon as these um, facilities are out there, and as I said, they're all out there really by the end of this month, um, we will start to, um, to burn. We will also then start to introduce the, um, let's say the rewards program that comes uh, associated with the um, users of our card. The more you use the card, the greater the rewards. Um, probably many of you won't remember um, what was in our white paper, but we will have a tiered reward program based upon the more you use it, the more tokens you own, um, the more you get. Um, so all of that is um, really happening this month. Um, it's not about talking about the future anymore. It is happening um, this month. What else is happening? New currencies um, and marketing. Let's talk about marketing. So we have not spent a lot of money and effort on marketing. Um, probably Sira Nusha, our marketing manager, will shout at me for saying that. But you know they've done a great job of keeping our internal community aware of what we're doing. But we haven't really spent a lot of time and effort going to the external community because until we launched the app um, with the card and all those other features, we were really not going to be marketing anything significantly different than anybody else had. So then was not the time. But now is the time to see um, a marketing push. So over the next few weeks, you're going to see uh, much more activity in the marketing area. Uh, we launch a referrals program, um, and we will start to launch additional tokens. Um, a long time ago, when we started the company, we were always saying that a key driver to our user base will be um, the bringing in of additional tokens. And with those tokens will come the token owners. So when we start to add additional tokens, we bring in those token owners into the application, and then they see all the various facilities that we've got. So we're now ramping that um, part of the program up. You will start to see um, adverts or let's say links. We've connected with a huge number of bloggers um, that um, are um, going to start to promote our uh, facilities, etc. cetera. Um, and I think that's gonna be quite exciting. Then we'll start to see a significant number of um, new users joining the application. Um, and I think that's probably a quick update. So I'm going to start to read some of the questions. Um, so any ETN express delivery option? Um, the express delivery option, two to three weeks. I think it's faster than that. I mean, I think um, the express delivery, it still takes time because it's not a matter of just the DHL. When a person says, can I have a card, of course, um, there is a printing element to it. Um, it's not done in, a, uh, in the back room on a small printer. It's done through a very professional um, system with the support of UnionPay. So you can't speed it up too fast. Um, so probably two weeks is the realistic um, date from when you apply for a card to the speed that you can get it. We, we can't really speed that up. DHL only takes 24 hours or even 48 hours. I think from the moment I ordered my card, from the message I got that said your card will be delivered in 48 hours. So I think that's normal. Um, the legal status for Cryptogram cards depends on the Philippines legislation of crypto or not. No, it's actually got nothing to do with um, the Philippines legislation on crypto. The Philippines and Union Pay has no connectivity to, um, to cryptocurrency. And this is actually a very important point. How do we do what we do? So 
the problem we face is not regulation per se, but the attitude of the partners. So let me give you an example. In Europe, the various bodies got together and they all said to the banks, we don't like crypto. Please be make, make it very difficult for crypto companies to get bank accounts, etc. Now, that's not legislation. That's just an attitude. We want to regulate it. We're not quite sure what we're going to do. So until we regulate it, let's just um, make life difficult for crypto-based companies. And that's why many crypto companies struggle to get bank accounts. Then Visa takes that type of information and says, well, we have to be very careful here. Um, it's not actually a regulatory issue for Visa at all. They just have to make sure that they are complying with KYC, with anti-money laundering and all those key, um, key features. And if they're happy that they are, then it's up to um, Visa whether they provide um, such a um, facility. Now for us, what we do is we are issuing our cards out of the Philippines. That's where all the data sits but all our customers are UK-based customers. They go through a UK-based company. Now we do that very carefully and for a very specific reason. Um, I'm British, so maybe I'm, um, I am biased here, but the UK is still considered one of the, the best run financial markets in the world. You know, that's in the US, for example. So we want to make sure that every partner we work with fully understands that we are a very compliant company. We do our KYC with a company called Jumio, one of the biggest um, KYC providers in the world. We do our anti-money laundering with a company called um, Chainalysis, etc. So we do everything through the UK. Um, and then what we do, of course, is we then work with a partner that is based in the Philippines. So the legislation that we are having to follow is actually UK legislation, but the banking, let's say the data connected to it once we've onboarded the customer is out of the Philippines. So we have a very, let's say, um, carefully worked mix that we are completely compliant in the most um, respected jurisdiction in the world, or at least one of the most respected jurisdictions in the world. And then we are working with a partner that says, okay, yes, you're working from the UK. We can accept that as a, a highly regulated market, and then they're prepared to work for us. If, for example, we were trying to onboard customers out of the Philippines, no disrespect to the Philippines, I'm sure that they are very capable, but maybe the US or Japan or somewhere would say, well, that's not really good enough. So we have a very careful mix of UK and um, the Philippines, and we do everything in accordance with um, UK um, regulations and legislation. And that's to some degree, you know, why I'm based in the UK and, uh, and not um, Holland or somewhere. Um, is the buy future, of, is the buy crypto future about to release? I think I've already answered that question. Yes, buying crypto is ready. And actually, we're going to do it in various forms, the buying crypto option. So I've talked about how we're going to do it um, through the application. Um, it will also be added to the website. Um, there will be a buy crypto function. So right now, if you wanted to buy crypto, you'd probably type in Changely, go to Changely and buy it through their website. Then we have exactly the same feature um, through our website. But also, I think very interestingly, we've developed, let's say, a very simple API linked, um, I'll call it a widget, which will be um, effectively put on other companies' websites. Our approach to this is, yes, of course, you can attract people to our own website, uh, and we'll put a lot of effort in that. Uh, but the other way we intend to do it is to put our widget on other companies' websites. So maybe there's um, a website out there that Maybe it doesn't have hundreds and thousands of, of users, but it's a crypto-based website and they're desperate for, for income right now. Of course, um, when the ICO boom was taking place, thousands of websites appeared, hundreds and hundreds of bloggers, uh, and they were all making a fortune from recommending various tokens. Um, they were charged $10,000 just to almost make a mention of someone's token during the ICO. But after the ICO bubble burst, um, all of these websites are desperate to make um, even a small um, amount of income. So we've developed a, a widget for them to stick onto their website and they can just buy crypto, click on the widget and buy, buy crypto. Now we will share a very small amount of revenue with them. But as I said, you know, the days of earning $10,000 um, from just mentioning a token during an ICO is completely gone and they're all looking for um, new ways of making money. So 
Um, that's a third way that we are, are doing this. So I'm just reading the next question. Can we understand that from now on, Cryptium invests heavily in marketing campaigns to increase the amount of users? Well, yes, as I just said, you know, that is exactly um, what we're doing. So we have put, let's say, 90% of our effort in the last 12 months on getting product. Uh, and then now that the product is pretty much um, launched, uh, we'll put 90% of our effort in getting um, users. Product will not be um, <coughs> excuse me. Product will not be finalized. Um, although we've got the Union Pay card, we still want a Visa um, or a Mastercard. Um, there are there are reasons for that, of course. Um, Visa is much more accepted, say, in the United States than a Union Pay card is. Um, so we still want to have uh, Visa as a MasterCard um, solution out there, so we're working on that. We would hope to have a Visa solution um, launched at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Uh, we've got the, basically the partnerships all lined up and we're working on it. But as I said, we didn't want to mess up the UnionPay um, launch. If you try and do too many launches at the same time, you just get up in, in a mess. So um, we've still got 10, let's say 15% of our effort will be on, on product, but most of our effort now is going to be on uh, marketing. We still won't be able to call ourselves a bank. Um, you can't call yourself, somebody's asked me a question here whether you can be, um, we can call ourselves a crypto bank. We like to refer ourselves as a crypto bank, um, but in reality, um, we can't call ourselves a bank because that's a very regulated work. You can't even actually use the word bank in certain documentation without um, having to have um, regulatory approval. So we try to avoid using the word bank, but I would like to think of ourselves as providing the equivalent uh, of a bank. Um, top 10 exchange is on the way. Um, it, we have been asked this question every time we have a, a um, live stream. We initially intended to go onto a top 10 exchange and we told you that we were going to, um, to push for a top 10 exchange. Um, we put a lot of time and effort onto various exchanges. And the reality was, every time we launched on an exchange, not actually that much happened to the token price. And it just created um, a little bit more visibility, but we never considered spending, for example, $1.5 million to get onto Binance as money well spent. Now that the products are out there, we are much more interested again on getting onto uh, um, the bigger exchanges. Um, it is very important that our users have facilities to be able to purchase um, our tokens. So that is back on the cards. We made a very conscious decision to take it off the cards, or off the table, um, because we just didn't see a value um, until we had our products. Um, but now it's back on the table. Next question, what about um, NFC payments? The, we cannot do NFC payments at this point in time with Union Pay. Um, it is a, um, a sort of touch and um, you put it into the machine um, type facility. That's just Union Pay, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, China, if you've ever been to China or you know anything about Chinese payment systems, they are very much into QR codes and those type of facilities. And NFC has not really been um, that big. And that's another reason why we're still very interested in doing a visa um, solution. Um, as I said, we are working on the visa solution right now. We would hope to have the visa solution in play by the beginning of the fourth quarter. Um, and that will have definitely NFC and hopefully Apple Pay and um, Samsung Pay. The partner that we are talking to has those facilities. Um, and we are, as I said, we're at the stages of, of starting to do the necessary integrations, etc. cetera. Um, so I hope that that will fulfill that need. But NFC doesn't, um, unfortunately, work with Union Pay. It's... It's not us, it is a union pay. And there's always a trade-off. You know, you can be global using union pay, or you can have NFC and be UK-based only. And it's just a, a trade-off for us. Um, what's next? Um, money transfer, mobile top-up vouchers are still under maintenance. When would all of these be released and um, launched? Pretty much everything that says under maintenance is being launched within the next three to four weeks. They are all ready. Um, every time you launch, however, a new facility, significant changes take place at the back of the app, as I've explained. So now that the card is working um, and the application process, we've fixed every single bug that we could find during the, um, the trial periods. Um, now that that's all working, everything else is pretty much going to be released within the next two to three weeks. So we're going to do it in various stages. Stage one, probably 
Um, within two weeks will be the buy crypto option. Um, the uh, option after that um, would be bank transfers. Um, we had the facility to pay IBAN transfers previously, um, and we, um, we switched that off for reasons which I won't go into. Um, that could get switched back on. Um, so I think both of those will be relaunched by the end of um, June. Then the, um, we'll add another token or two um, early July, and the mobile top-up, they all get back um, on. So let's say middle of July, pretty much every button that you click on right now on our app that says under maintenance um, will be switched on. Um, and as I said, many of it was, we, you know, we have to find a phrase. Uh, so we say under maintenance. It's not really that they were under maintenance. We were just making sure that we got the card um, launch perfect before we um, we had too many flows in, in other areas. And also, let's be um, let's be realistic. The primary driver for our success as a company will be the cards. Um, being able to send um, a mobile top up um, is nice, and we were having about let's say I think it was around 200 um, top ups in a month at the beginning when it was there, which was nice. Um, it was a nice feature for people, but that doesn't make or break the company. So making sure that those type of things do not mess up the bigger picture um, was important to us. So they all come back on uh, in a very near um, future. Um, let me see what else is being asked. What are our various goals for um, the total number of cards? Now, I think that's a, a decent question. We are global. Um, and we have a different um, attitude, as I said, to, to the other companies. So Crypto.com, I think it's a great name. Um, they probably paid a fortune for Crypto.com, and they'll probably be quite successful. But right now, they are U.S.-based and a, a, few states in, uh, or a few states in the U.S. and Singapore. Um, but they can't go to Turkey, for example. They can't go to South Korea. They can't go to various other markets. So our approach is not really to take on, say, spend.com head-to-head in the US, uh, or to take on crypto.com in Singapore. We'll let them spend their money and, 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 and effort in those markets. We will be available in those markets, but we're gonna put a huge amount of, of effort into the markets where we think there's a, a, a sort of, people are crying out for it. Now, if you follow political um, issues, You'd know, for example, South America right now, it's a bit of a mess in, in, in many countries. And when it's a mess, they can't even get their hands on dollar or euro. They're desperately looking for alternatives. But if they put their money into crypto, then they have to be able to get it back out of crypto. So we are putting um, a significant amount of effort into places like Venezuela, um, Brazil, um, Chile, etc. Because we think there's a, a significant demand. And as far as we are aware, nobody has put together a sort of crypto package solution for them. So that is our priority. We're looking at Turkey. We're looking at South Korea. I mean, South Korea, for example, at least 3 million crypto owners. But from our experience, um, it's not that easy for South Koreans to really get their hands on Western apps. First of all, they're not usually in the right language, etc. But they really want the facility. We're partnering with a company called Paxnet. We've done, a, um, let's say, a, a joint venture with Paxnet to we provide the application. They already have 6 million um, users of a facility, um, which is actually connected to socks and shares, but they've got a perfect user base. So we are targeting countries, markets, where we are very confident that there is not a huge amount of competition and there is a desperate need for our type of service. So going back to the question, you know, how many um, users do we think we will have? No, our goal is a million users within two years. Uh, a million, I'm going to say users, I don't mean people who download the app. You can easily get a million people who download the app. You know, there's many apps out there that have got a million downloads. But we're talking about a million people that download the app and, and physically do something in the app. Something that generates um, a cryptarium um, income. And then, of course, for our token owners, a cryptarium benefit because Every transaction requires effectively a, a CRPT transaction and the burning of the token. That is our, that's our focus and I think um, there's no reason why we can't achieve uh, a million cards uh, and a million um, active users by targeting those type of markets. Um, I mean, for example, Raphael, um, who is our um, chief development officer in terms of sales and marketing, 
he is incredibly well connected from South America. He used to be responsible for MasterCard all of South America. Um, so we, we've already got connections, we've already got the people, um, and it's now just a matter of putting all of those um, activities in play now, because until we had the card, there was not much we could do. Now it's all ready. Um, there's no reason why we, um, we can't achieve those type of goals. How long until Bitcoin savings account is released? After all, under maintenance is done. Actually, that's, a, that's the only one I haven't mentioned. Um, we are um, pretty much, we've tested this. It's very simple to do. Um, I will be um, you know, clear, we are not gonna do all of the work ourselves here. There are a number of specialist companies out there that do this. And we, will ha we have already done the integration work with one of the large um, providers in this space. Um, now, what we will do is effectively take the um, already worked through capability and it will just be sitting inside our application. As far as you're concerned, you won't see any um, difference between our application and the fact that we're working with a third party in the same way that we work with BitGo, for example, for our cold storage. I mean, we make sure that your tokens are completely secure, but you don't know that we're working with a company called BitGo that makes that happen. So that facility is um, pretty much built, uh, and I think that will be, again, I mean, I know I sound a bit repetitive here, but it's going to be in the next two to three, maybe four weeks, because they're all ready. It's just a matter of us making sure that we switch them on in a orderly process so that we don't um, overblow um, the system in that too many changes all at the same time. Each one needs to be launched. Give ourselves about two weeks to make sure that there were no significant bugs because you don't really know until you're in the live environment. You think you've tested everything, of course, but in a live environment, you, you might find the odd bug. Um, and then once that one's ticked off, we, we launch the next one. So, and, and that's a good one. I mean, I think it's very important because if I can just leave my Bitcoin sitting there and I'm going to earn, say, 5 or 6% by it just sitting there, why would I not do it? So that's, um, so that's definitely um, something that's going to be launched in the next um, few weeks. So I think that's it. I mean, I, I, I don't want to talk for too long. I don't want to bore you, but I think I've asked, answered the main questions that are popping up on my screen. I've got somebody feeding me the questions on my, um, on my WhatsApp channel. And I think they are um, the main questions. So just to finish off, you know, I think, first of all, thank you to the community for, for being patient with us. Um, it has taken us a lot longer. I know that people would be worried um, that, you know, we keep saying that we're going to launch something and then for whatever reason we were unable to do it. Um, it is not due to lack of effort. Um, sometimes we've just been unlucky and other times um, the market has been against us. But now that the card is launched, everything um, is ready to roll. Uh, within the next six weeks, you'll pretty much see everything that was in the app that says under maintenance um, released. We then go with a big marketing push. We start to bring in new tokens. As we bring in new tokens, we bring in new users. We launch the referral program. The um, tokens start to get burned. It's taken us 18 months to get to this point. It should have probably taken us nine to 12 months. Um, but as I said, the world isn't always perfect. And we're very happy now and we're very confident that we're at the peak time. And also, I mean, it's, it's nice and fortuitous in that um, crypto is on the up. Um, if we were launching maybe three months ago, maybe we'd be a little bit pessimistic because, you know, as everybody knows, crypto was in a bit of a down period, three and a half thousand, four thousand dollars for Bitcoin. Are people really going to start spending any Bitcoin if it's already at such a depressed level, etc.? Um, so I think our timing is also good, fortuitous. We did, I wish I'd like to say we planned this, but we didn't. Um, so we're very excited. I'm personally very excited. Um, I was super excited yesterday when I took 20 pounds out of a, a locally ATM on my card. Um, and I hopefully you guys will, um, you know, find a use for the cars, find a use for our facilities. And then as we start to um, see more users, we'll see more burning of our token and hopefully we'll all sort of benefit from that side as well. Okay, I filled in my time. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for being patient with us. And I look forward to another live stream, maybe in about six to eight weeks time when I can um, back up all the things I've said today and um, show you that all these facilities are, are now working. All right, excellent. Thank you, everybody. And I hope to speak to you all soon.